Since installing these spark plugs in that car and then side gapping them, I thought there may have been a benefit by increasing the spark ignition dwell time to get the maximum performance out of this combination of parts, including higher output ignition coils. And that's exactly what I'm doing in this video, testing the differences between the stock dwell time and then incrementally adding a little bit all the way up to five milliseconds to see if there is a difference in performance measured on the draggy. And well, I gotta tell you, after finishing all of the testing, I think I have more questions now than answers. So let's get into the data. All right, so here is the first run 1.5 milliseconds. Moves along pretty good. We'll take a look at our second run here, three milliseconds. Sorry for the glare and the popping in the audio. Don't know what that is. And the final run at five milliseconds. Now we're gonna look at them all together and something really weird happens and I'm gonna kind of replay this and we're gonna take a look at something. Notice how the five millisecond run kind of takes off a little bit faster but as it gets to about 60 it falls off on its face where the 1.5 millisecond run just really takes off on the top end. I find that very interesting. So you think five milliseconds would have been the fastest, yet the 1.5 millisecond, AKA stock dwell time, was the fastest on the draggy? 4.26 seconds, 4.62 seconds at three milliseconds, and 4.9 seconds at five milliseconds. None of this makes sense because the video showed up until about 65 mile per hour, five milliseconds was cooking. Above that, the stock 1.5 milliseconds really got going. And then the three millisecond run was kind of in between, but yet look at the three millisecond runs accelerometer. Look at those big spikes over one G, which I definitely felt as boost ramped in. It doesn't make any sense. The video looked like five was the fastest. Accelerometer looks like three should be the fastest, yet somehow the draggy recorded stock dwell time as being the fastest by a pretty good margin. So I'm not sure what's going on there. I don't know if this is some discrepancy with the draggy data or what, but it's not very consistent, which sucks because I'm trying to gather useful data, yet my results are a little inconsistent between different sources. But let's go ahead and take a look at the data logs because they might shed some light on what's going on here and see why each run looks the way it does. Okie dokie, let's take a look at the logs here. I have a log for each run and let's see if we can make any more sense on what's going on here in the log. First and foremost, this is the first run, um, stock dwell settings. And oddly enough, right around here at 5,200 RPM, I don't know why the car is running this lean, but it's running fine. It's happy. There's no knock or anything, but it is leaner. It's a lot leaner than what I'm commanding. Uh, as you can see, 0.93 Lambda is what the car is running. Now let's take a look at the air fuel for the second run at three milliseconds. And we take a look here and it looks like the highest it gets is 0.87. So it's running richer during the second run. Well, that's interesting. Now, how about five milliseconds? Where does five milliseconds put us? 0.8. Eight, so a little bit leaner than the second run. That's really strange. Now, something else I'm gonna look at here is this number right here. This is the uh, cat temp. The only reason I think this number kind of plays an important role is because more pressure, more cylinder pressure equals more heat, generally. You know, the more power you make, the more heat you'll make. I'm going to go and look at this number and say the higher the number, the more cylinder pressure the engine is making. So 
right here at the leanest sampled section of the run, five milliseconds was 1,169 degrees Fahrenheit at the cat. Three milliseconds at the leanest part of the run was 1,089 degrees. And then stock, about one and a half milliseconds, 1,099. So the run with five milliseconds actually had the hottest temp. Now at the end of the run, at five milliseconds, we got a max of 1,430 degrees. Now let's check three milliseconds. 1,171 degrees, so a lot cooler. And now stock, 1,228 degrees. So that's just very conflicting data. So let's go and look at one more thing. We're gonna look at, see how much timing the car saw during the run. So this is stock dwell. At the top of third gear, the car saw 14.7 degrees of spark. And at peak boost, it only saw about 1.5 degrees of spark advance. And um, neither of these runs had any positive knock retard. It was always adding timing throughout the run. So yeah, that's very strange. Um, let's go to run number two at three milliseconds. Let's see what happened there. And at the top of third gear, we have 12 degrees. So it's running less timing than stock dwell, which is kind of crazy. And at peak boost, it actually wasn't running any ignition advance. It was uh, zero. So that's very interesting. Let's check five milliseconds and see how that looks. Five milliseconds at the top of third gear, we have 12.8 at the top there. At peak boost, we have 2.5 degrees of spark added. It just, it's all over the place and it doesn't seem to make any sense to where the car is adding timing and how, but there is seem to be a difference in overall timing. The run with the highest timing at the top of third gear was the first run with the stocked well settings, adding almost 15 degrees of total timing. And also the second highest at full boost. And the run with the second highest timing was the run at five milliseconds with 13 degrees, but then we're just kind of splitting hairs, 13, 12.9. We're kind of splitting hairs with the second run at three milliseconds, they're pretty much the same. The only difference is three milliseconds at full boost was zero, where at five milliseconds, it was adding 2.5 degrees. It was adding the most timing under boost. That's so wild. Yeah, I don't know what to make of this. I really thought there was a benefit. In fact, this whole video has really thrown me through a loop. Would there be a difference with just normal spark plugs that aren't side gapped? Maybe, I don't know. Now with that, maybe I need to see exactly where this engine likes to be with its commanded air fuel ratio. Hmm, I think that'll be the next video. But until that video, it's gonna wrap it up here for this video. If you liked the video, please give it a thumbs up, share it with everyone you know if you wanna see more content like this and you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. Keep a lookout for next Cars Creative video.